Yo, Elliot. Hope you're well, brother. I'm struggling to connect with women my age. I feel I connect with older women as they're more mature with their emotions and behaviors. How do I overcome this? I gotta say, bro, that I've had the same sentiment as well. I remember thinking that if I wasn't with my wife, girlfriend at the time, that I would probably be more interested in more mature women, older women, because I remember seeing at the time how the girls were acting. And I, again, this is way before I was red pilled. It was way before I was married, way before I was a Christian, way before anything. It was just my sense. And I remember again, sensing that it seems that the girls, the women that are older than me have more to offer than these young bimbos who are throwing their twats around uh, and riding the cock carousel. And so even back then, I sort of had a disdain for the party years that most of the women that I would have been dating were in. And I and, and in my heart, I sensed that I would much rather be, I even remember thinking this, now I, I have caveats for all of this now, as I'm awakened to a lot of things and I'll talk to you about it. But I even remember thinking, you know, like a single mom would probably be a good wife because she's probably less likely to be out there riding the carousel, uh, she has more responsibilities, so she had, she's forced to grow up a little bit earlier. Not necessarily that any of that is true, but that was my thinking. My thinking was, you know, older women, uh, mother-type women are going to be better wives, right? Is that 100% true? Well, yes and no, right? But I say this because I totally resonate with everything that you're, that you're asserting in terms of older women. Um, Part of the reason why it's worked so well and lasted so long with me and my wife is that my wife was very mature very early. In fact, she like her her mom was a bit absent, very absent, and she comes from a broken home. And so she took on the role of a parent to her younger siblings when she was in middle school. And so I remember like when she and I were together, it at, in some ways I kind of resented it but then I grew out of it that, wow, this girl is really mature. And this girl is, she was a nurturer from the beginning and she would do things like do my laundry and she would cook for me and she would like, she became like my surrogate mother. I hate to say that and, and I know that sounds weird, but in many ways she was very motherly from the beginning when we started dating. And I was like, wow, I can get used to this. This is like, she's, She's a mature woman who takes responsibility. I mean, we were talking, we were laughing at her just now because she's a little OCD about cleanliness. But I remember, like, I would just be in awe that the fact that the, she, my girlfriend would want to keep things clean. She wanted to clean my house. She wanted to clean my room. And she still is to this day. That's just her nature. So I, was, I you know, I, part of the reason why our relationship lasted so long is because I had a mature woman. I, she wasn't, she wasn't a young slut that was so busy partying and drinking and being a degenerate that uh, that all femininity and all responsibility related to the greatest station in life uh, was purged or beaten from her like most women are today. After, after their party years, they're not even capable of being wives and husbands, right? They say that the, to the degree that a woman has slept with different men, more men means less ability to pair bond. The more, uh, and, and even in terms of their children, they can't bond as well with their children. So um, anyway, I know I'm sort of ranting on that a little bit because I just want you to know that you're not alone, that I, when I was in my early 20s, I used to think, you know, like a girl in her 30s would probably be a better fit because she would make better wife material. Again, I don't know if that's true or not, but it was my sentiment. Now, if I had to put myself in your shoes and I was seriously considering being with an older woman, there would be, there would be some uh, guidelines that I would consider. There are some guidelines I would consider, right? And so dating, there, there, there are, there are uh, dangers associated with dating an older woman. Here are a few of them to watch out for. And I'm not, I can't tell you what to do, but I want to give you eyes so that you can see. Oh, okay. Number one, an older woman generally is going to already have her own career, have her own money, and in many ways not need you. And when a woman is, has her own career, is making her own money, her ego is a lot bigger. She's more used to calling the shots for herself and, and having things the way that she wants. And it's going to be very difficult for her to submit 
to a younger man, a less established man, a man that makes more less money. She might like you, she might enjoy having sex with you, but she there's a tendency for her not to respect you as you would require for a woman that becomes your wife. If she's already well established, she already makes her own money, she don't really need you, there will be a depolarization or a flopping of the polarization within the family. This is why in order to maintain strong sexual polarity in a relationship, it's better for men to, young, to date younger women, right? And I know this, I, I, you know, I understand that people, they, they cringe and they have a hard time when I speak in these terms, but you gotta understand that there's, there's, there's laws of nature and there's divine laws and there are better ways of being. Uh, and as it says in the Bible and this entire book on marriage and family by St. John Chrysostom uh, makes it very evident, very clear, what Paul asserts in Corinthians and Ephesians when he talks to the people about wives submitting to your husbands. Wives submit to your husbands. Husbands love your wives. Both are very hard but required. Respect and love. And it goes, respect goes up, woman to man. There's a hierarchy. There's a hierarchy. I know people don't like to hear that, but there's a hierarchy between men and women. I'm not saying men are better than women. I'm saying men lead women. M men are in charge. Paul describes it this way. He says the man is the head and the, and the woman is the body. What does the head do? The head does everything in his best interest to help the body. The head is in charge. The head makes the decisions, but he takes feedback from the body. The body says, oh, I got some grumbling in my stomach. There's something I need. So the head says, okay, stomach. Well, you know, it's, it's, I need you because without you, I'm just a floating head. A floating head doesn't exist. A man without a woman is a floating head. He's a leader of nothing. And a woman who has no man belongs to the streets. She has no leader. She's just floating around, right? right? We were talking about that the other night, about a woman that we know who's gone from man to man to man to man. Uh, my dad was kind of asking me, he's like, well, okay, because he knows my opinion on various things. And there's this woman that's been passed around a lot of times. And so he, my dad was kind of joking with me and he says to me, well, don't you say that if you're sleeping with a woman, she's your wife? And so this woman that we're talking about has been sleeping around and actually sleeping with a new guy. And I said to him, look, there's a certain point where you're cut off and you just belong to the streets. There's a certain point when a woman with no head, with no leader, who's running around and she's just a body, right? She's just a body. At a certain point, you're just a body. She is, she belongs to the streets. She don't belong to a man. A body belongs to a head, right? And vice versa. But a head with no body, a body with no head. Belong to the streets and who knows what. Anyway, so one of the things I would, I would be aware of, privy to, and caution against is getting involved with a woman that's too well established, has too much of an ego about her career, too much about her, her, her apartment, I would definitely, absolutely, 100% not move in with an older woman. That would be, that would be one boundary that I would place against the corruptive, the corruptive tendency in dating an older woman, right? Being with an older woman. You're going to move into her frame. Mm -mm -mm -mm. You're older than me. That's already, a, she's already got a foot up on you. You got to make. You got to get your own frame. And you got to bring her into it. You got to even as a younger man, you must have your frame, because if you step into an older woman's frame, you become her son. I've seen this happen so many times. Even with guys, you know, I was talking about dating single women. I see these women who, uh, or these young men, because it's really the men that I deal with, who start dating and get with an older woman that has multiple children, and they just become one of their kids. <laughs> careful, careful with that. Be very careful with that. You don't want to be a, a husband's son, right? You know how we got son husbands? The son that, you know, the mother builds up to be, you know, a beta male, but the type of man that she thinks she wants. Call it a son husband. You don't want to be a husband's son, right? It's a, it's a husband that comes in, but you're not really a husband. You're just one of the kids. It happens all the time. Older women. So I would, I would guard against that with regard to older women. Uh, I would guard against the tendency for her to want to usurp your power as a man and be the leader in a relationship. I think it's paramount for all relationships, all male-female relationships, courting, marriage, and so forth, 
that you both be on the same page as to who's the head and who's the body. It's not about better and worse. It's not about uh, oppressor and oppressed. This is what the fem feminists have, that's one of the feminist lies, is that patriarchy by its nature is oppressive because men are in charge. It's not. Noble leadership. The head leads the body. The head leads the body, but it's nothing without the body. It takes feedback from the body. It gives everything it approaches and receives to the body. You put the food in the mouth, it goes into your body. You're one body. You become one flesh. That's the mystery of marriage. So what are some other things to take into consider with regard to an older woman? The next would be, I would venture, I would, I would stay away from older women that have children. I would stay away from older women who've had previous marriages. If she's had previous marriages, again, I know I sound like a, a trad con when I say stuff like that, because I kind of am. A woman who has been married, divorced, still belongs to that man, the first man. They may not know it, she may forget. Like I, Colleen has this friend, <laughs> so funny, man. I know I'm ranting a lot. This is crazy too, because she wanted to go after younger men, but the younger men were like, uh, I, I'll bone you, but I ain't staying with you. She was married, so one of uh, Colleen's friends, basically our kids grew up together, so Colleen was friends with a woman. And her husband, I've known them, you know, I knew them as long as our kids were infants, you know. By the time our kids were teenagers, she want to open marriage first. That's the first red flag. She want to open marriage. All of a sudden, she want to start boning. And what she was doing is she's trying to pick up on the guys at strength camp because she would come to my gym. She's trying to like have sex with my interns and stuff. We go, you know, we go to barbecues or we do like gatherings and stuff. I'm like, what is this chick doing? She's trying to like s s sun up some of my some of the guys, like the members at my gym, young men. I'm like, what do you think? She trying to like relive her party years or something? I don't understand what's going on. She had a few uh, plastic surgeries and started working out. And all of a sudden now her husband's not good enough for her. And she's trying to, you know, nut up with these young dudes. Anyway, eventually they divorce. And she ends up with this other man. Moves him into the house with the kids. The husband, he left. You know, he's somewhere else, right? Brings in her new man. Her new man, her new man come into the house. It's like, he's the new dad. This is the weirdest shit. This is how people live though. He's the new dad. Not but a year and a half or so later, she got tired of him. I think he was addicted to smoking too much weed or something like that. Kicked him out. And now the kids are fatherless, fatherless again. Don't get involved with divorced women. Don't get involved with women who have kids. What I tell her, and I haven't said it to her because I'm, I'm not trying to make any problems, but if I wanted to create a problem and I see her complaining on Facebook all the time about how, oh, she's, you know, she's trying to like motivate herself. You know how women make bad decisions and they try to justify it with all kinds of motivational quotes and stuff? It's so dumb. I see her putting up these motivational quotes and stuff and I just want to write on every single one of them, go back to your husband, go back to your husband, go back to your husband, go back to your husband. Because that's your husband and you're out there playing games and it's, it's slapping you in your face. It's silly. Don't deal with older women that are playing games. If she divorced, tell her, go back to her husband, right? You don't want, to, you want anything to do with her, right? Sorry, right? I don't believe she deserves another chance. I don't believe you deserve another chance. You screwed it up. And look, 90% of divorces are initiated by women and then they regret it. I was looking at these articles before on somebody was did a uh, what did he call it when you when you bring together a bunch of articles. Anyway, they collected a bunch of articles uh, about women who are now they're they're uh, regretful for their divorce. The whole world feeds them this lie that you could just you could do whatever you want. You can go get them again, girl. And the whole world supports these women. It's the craziest thing. Other women will not chastise other women. Right. And I used to tell my wife, too, I was like, I hope you're not supporting this. Right. And of course, she, she's grown farther away. But I know my wife is a woman, too, and her nature would be to. Oh, you know, try to be nice. They're egalitarian. They want to, they want to get along. I'm like, you ain't, don't get along with that. That's wrong. And she knows it's wrong. That's wrong. I don't condone that. I don't think you should condone that. Don't tell her she's doing a good job. That you go, girl. You you still got it. This is what they tell these older women. You still got it. Don't don't deal with any old woman who thinks she still got it. You don't. Especially if you was previously married and you got kids. So that would be another thing that I would guard against careerism, right, where they're married to their career and they think that they're strong and independent and they need no man and they're absolutely not going to respect you as a result. 
Number two, a woman who's been previous married has kids because you will always be last on the totem pole. Greg Adams talks about this a lot. I like Greg Adams. He talks about how you're not, you're never going to be first in this woman's life. Her kids will be first. Her ex-husband will be next and the dog. And then you, you're, you're, you're lower than the dog. You came in late. Don't deal with any older woman that is of that, of that caliber. And I'll leave you with that. I understand your sentiment. I, 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 I am with you on that. I, I wish women behaved more maturely as, as a result. I wish women in their 20s took, had, more, had more dignity and integrity and chastity and treated their bodies and treated their lives under the reality that time is limited. Young women waste their, their party years partying and then grow old and wonder where all the good men are. All the good men that you were rejecting that were good marriage material when you were 20 so you could ride the cock carousel are gone now, girl. They're gone, sorry. They waste their youth on college, career, and cock riding. Stay away from these women. But I have a dream of a world where women will once again take pride in chastity, have in take bodily integrity, nobility of character, and be worthy wives and mothers, future matriarchs of our society, rather than these old sleuths that they are. So anyway, that's my opinion on that. That's my, um, <laughs> that's my uh, assertion that I think you're doing all right, but you just got to look out for those red flags, dude. Done. Yo, it's your bro, Elliot. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, you ought to know that it was a clip from one of my most recent King Transformation classes with my students where, among other things, we get together about four or five hours a week and we speak on things as it relates to becoming kings in our lives and fitness, business, and with women. That sounds like you and you want to join a like-minded group of men who are growing stronger every day in every way in this degenerate age, then it's real simple. Just follow me on Instagram and then DM me the word King, K-I-N-G, and then me and my team will get back to the details to see if you qualify. I really hope to see you at the next meeting. Done.